Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, I did a video last night about Brandon Carter and lazy itis. Bit of tongue in cheek, bit of joking, but it was all in good fun. Uh, but it did raise some interesting questions that I want to talk about, and that's both bodybuilders and fitness YouTubers who make their living working out who still don't have an extremely strong strength base and why I don't think that's acceptable. Uh, and what people need to remember, when I do those current events videos, a lot of those are tongue-in-cheek, a lot of those are intended to be humor, they're intended to be entertainment. I wouldn't take those super serious. And I know a lot of people out there take that out of context. They think that anytime I make those videos, oh, that I'm being dead serious about everything, uh, and I'm really not. I'm a lot more serious in these informative videos. When I say stuff here, I'm probably being a lot more serious. The others are intended as entertainment videos for the most part, keeping people up to date on stuff, just kind of giving my opinions to have a little bit of fun. Yeah, sometimes I insult people who need insulting. Sometimes I compliment people who need it, but they are entertainment videos. So I wouldn't take that any more seriously. A lot of the things I say in those videos than you do watching your favorite TV shows. It's just entertainment people. Now, that being said, when it comes to this, though, uh, you have a lot of people who don't have really an acceptable strength base, meaning, I don't mean power lifter strong. I'm not saying uh, fitness YouTubers should be power lifter strong. You've got guys like Candido who are deadlifting, what, 660, 670, uh, while weighing less than 200 pounds, right? He's squatting something like 550 weighing less than 200 pounds. I'm not saying they need to be at that level. Not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is if you don't have a full-time job and you make your living working out, you make your living off body composition, having a very strong strength base should be part of your job. And if you don't, then you're being lazy. And, you know, you're shortchanging your gains. These are people who don't have other jobs to worry about. They don't have other jobs to worry about. And I'll give you some examples right now off the top of my head who are decently strong. How about Chris Jones? How about Mike Rasheed? I clown Mike Rasheed because I think Mike Rasheed is a moron. I clown the hell out of him. But he's strong. The guy's pretty strong. A guy who benches 400 plus, he built up to a 500 raw squat doing a squatting every day program. Now, a lot of people would argue, well, he's also weighing 230, 240. I don't think that's that impressive. Well, fair enough. But he's not a power, power lifter, right? And that's the example we could give. That's the difference of saying, okay, someone's not a power lifter. They don't need necessarily top-level power lifter numbers. But when you claim that your life revolves around fitness and it's what you do for a living, you better have a respectable strength base. And so, yeah, a guy who weighs 220 plus damn well better be squatting 500 plus pounds. They damn well better be able to, to deadlift 600 pounds. That's not power lifter strong. That's what people need to, to understand. Mike Rashid is not going to go <laughs> compete at the world level in power lifting with those numbers at his body weight or what he was weighing when he hit those numbers, right? Chris Jones is not going to go compete at worlds in power lifting with his numbers. But they are both considerably stronger for guys their height, for guys their weight, they are considerably stronger than the average gym rat. But if you're a pro YouTuber, fitness YouTuber, whose job it is to work out and make fitness videos and you can't squat close to 500 pounds, if you only can only squat 400 pounds, that's a problem. And yeah, people will say that, well, bodybuilders, no, bodybuilders are weak because they use a ton of drugs and can get away with being weak. All right, you need to understand they would have more muscle if they were stronger. And natural guys, look at that data that we looked at the other day. Look at the data we looked at the other day. It was found that the most important, single most important factor in max squat, in someone's max squat in that study, was their amount of lean mass relative to their height. In other words, the more muscle a person had on their body, the more they tended to have squat for a one rep max. You're talking about lower body strength too. Core, glutes, hamstrings, quads, the muscles that you're using in all your cardio. What is generally been found even by a lot of power lifters, is there's people will talk a lot about power lifters always being fat. The average power lifter is not fat. Really competitive power lifters, 
who don't use a suit and use their fat to compress against the suit, who compete raw, the ones who are winning tend to be relatively lean. They tend to have visible abs. What you find and what a lot of powerlifters have noted over the years is that as their squat strength and lower body strength goes up, they struggle to even gain body fat at a certain threshold. Yeah, I gain fat easier when I have uh, a lower squat. But what's been noted by a lot of these guys is that, you know, when they were squatting 400, their maintenance calories were a lot lower while doing more cardio. And as their strength went up, guys have noted that who tracked their stuff over the years. And I saw a guy do a video on that the other day, a smaller channel. Uh, I can't remember his exact name, but he was discussing Bulgarian training. That when he got up into the high 500s on the squat, that he needed a lot more calories to maintain his body weight than he did when uh, he was squatting like 400 pounds. In other words, that extra 150 pounds added to his squat allowed him to do less cardio and to struggle to gain weight without eating junk food. Well, you guys need to remember a lot of the really strong power lifters you see who are fat, they sit around eating extremely high fat diets. They sit around eating a lot of junk in order to maintain that body weight. They're eating double bacon cheeseburgers. What you find is that lifters who get brutally strong, and I mean brutally strong, if you're squatting well above 500 pounds raw, right? Not 400, I'm talking 550, 600, 650. Any of these power lifters who squat those sort of weights who actually do cardio, who eat clean diets, struggle to gain body fat. They tend to be lean. They tend to have visible abs. And it's because we know that as your lower body strength goes up, your force production dramatically improves and work capacity improves on your cardio and all your other activities. You burn an enormous amount of calories in all of your training, your GBP work, your cardio that you do because you have such an enormous work capacity due to your strength. All right, these people end up burning a lot of calories, and if they eat clean foods, when I mean whole foods, it's harder to overeat those already. These are people who tend to have very, very good body composition, and they tend to do very good in competition because of that. So kind of the whole point here when we talk about strength like this, no, having a max squat that is very, very high will help your body composition goals. People just choosing to do it out of laziness, and that's what it is. And no, I do not believe this idea that there are body types that aren't built to squat. That's nonsense. No, maybe you won't have the prettiest bodybuilder quads if all you do is squats. If you have a certain body type. Some body types will have amazing quads. But it could be the style of squatting that they're doing could be the style of squatting that they're doing. And a lot of the people who claim to have that body type, they don't. You look at the, the guys who struggle to get the quad development that they want from squatting uh, tend to have really, really long legs. All right. Guys who are under six foot tall, no, I don't think so. And guys who are under six foot tall don't go into pro bodybuilding either. Or, or, or above six foot. Really tall guys with long legs don't go into pro bodybuilding. So again, if you start talking about these strength, uh, no, if you work out for a living and you can't manage to build a strength base way above normal, that's a respectable strength base, and, and that's what I honestly expect, at least a 550 deadlift, at least a 500 squat, at least a 350 bench, right, a 225 overhead press, some decent numbers here, guys. Uh, if you're a professional fitness YouTuber and you get paid to work out, even if your primary goals are body composition, you work out for a living. You know that that strength base will carry over into any other sport you try to go into. You know it will help your overall body composition. To not do so is just laziness and it's promoting bad things. It's not helping people because it's, it's a lot of these guys are using a bunch of gear to get there. They still don't train that hard. They don't build a strength base. And then their fans think that they're going to get there themselves by training the way that they are. And the reality is when it comes to natties particularly, the stronger you are even on your one rep maxes, all the available research shows that you're going to have more muscle. There is a direct correlation there, particularly, particularly things like the barbell squat. So for guys who are chasing maximum body composition, 
they really need to get those lifts up and these guys are doing a disservice and that's one reason i'm back to focusing building my strength up uh lead by example lead by example yes i plan on getting back to a 500 squat this year i don't plan on stopping there why would i stop at 500 i've had over a 600 squat when i was younger uh, i might not get to a 600 again but i'm sure not going to stop at five and that's just one of the lifts I've got goals for. You know, I think that, that if I'm going to say, hey, these are where these fitness YouTubers need to be, I, I do this for a living too. I need to be reaching towards that myself. So when I say that, guys, it's not just about me criticizing those people. It's me saying, well, you know, if I'm going to say this and I've said it out loud, I better step up to the plate. I better step up to the plate. And you lead by example. You know, I can't have Mike Rashid outlifting me. Can't have Chris Jones outlifting me. I don't know, maybe I can't even have Johnny Candido outlifting me. I don't know if that's acceptable. Yes, I'm in my 40s. Yes, I'm a master's lifter. But, again, lead by example. Strength first, guys. Strength is the foundation of all physical endeavors. And that includes body composition. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.